Good morning everybody and welcome back to the workshop. Today we're going to be building the Universal Pillar Tool by GOH Thomas. Uh, this particular tool is seen as a bit of a rite of passage for model engineers as far as I'm aware um, and it's, uh, it will provide the capability of doing some tapping um, in a really nice way, staking and uh, precision drilling, dividing and a few other things. Um, so let's get started. I wasn't planning to record this, but here are some parts I made earlier. These are some brass plugs which are used to clamp the components to that shaft you can see in the background. I used a slitting saw to get that little keyway in there. This is just a demonstration because I forgot to record it. And here's a pretty substantial piece of 7 8 inch silver steel. These are the arms of the pillar tool. They're a bit of an odd shape, so I'm using my surface plate and height gauge to mark out where the bores are going to be. Here I'm spotting out with a spot drill and then I'll be drilling through various sizes to get the correct diameter. I'm spot facing here with a slot drill and it's not exactly the correct usage of it but I seem to have got away with it. Having turned the part over I re-register it with a drill down the holes I did the other way around and spot face this side and counter bore the other. Those are for the clamping plugs and now we've got to sort out the bores for the pillar itself and the tools we're going to be mounting. I always like catching these big drills in there, I think it's very interesting to watch them go. I did finish out the bore on this one with my boring head which I think is the first time I'm using this in actual anger. On the other side, I had a reamer that was exactly correct, so I thought I may as well use it. There was a bit of extra work to do on these castings to get those edges over, and I'm happy I've got a great new hacksaw, which looks brilliant. The next piece to machine is the base. So I'm following the instructions in the book, and they say to surface off the base itself, go around the rim, and then tidy up the casting with round files and uh, the edges. I didn't get it perfect as you can see here, but I think it's pretty good and it's not noticeable when the part is laying on the table. There is a little counterbore in the bottom here and I think that's to stop the tool from rocking, um, but I will be screwing it down. I'm using an indicator here to try and get in the, the top and see how far out I am. And I'm just turning a shoulder here and then a chamfer and then I'll be rounding that over to make a nice end cap for the base when it comes in contact with the shaft. I'm spot drilling here again and then I will be going at increasingly large drills and then back to a reamer to get a nice reamed hole down the centre here that will allow me to clamp the shaft in place. Now we're getting into the really large drills, I put the lathe into back gear. This is one of my larger drills, and uh, even slower now, we're in the slowest gear the lathe does for that reaming, because I don't want to get it oversized. Okay, you just take off the corner there, the deburring tool, get the uh, dust out, and do a bit of test fitting. Pretty happy with that. I've got to get the base on the rotary table. Now we're going to be spot facing for the three fixing holes for, for mounting this to a piece of wood or the workbench and yeah, just using that rotary table. Again it's probably the first time I'm using this in actual anger at least in this way. And it seems to go pretty well. We're going to uh, spot drill down into those spot faced areas and then go down pretty slowly really with the, the drills to open it out. I think it's number 13 got a number 10 screw and a nice little chamfer there on the edge. The next thing to do was to slot the top of the base so that then I can clamp down on the pillar when it gets inserted. Pretty happy with how this went as well. Um, obviously there's three cast surfaces there so I was kind of eyeballing the center and it being horizontal. Uh, now I want to make sure that the location is correct for drilling and boring. So I did this plug here for the same diameter as that round section and uh, arranged it like so. 
And again, now we're going to spot drill, and we're going to drill all the way through with number four. As you'll just see here, there we go, that's the number four going in. Then we're going to drill an F to clearance at the top, a bit of a spot face, just to make sure there's a flat surface to clamp onto. And then we're going to tap quarter inch BSF, which is what all the fixings are in this kit. The end result is this, which I think looks pretty handsome. Got those three mounting holes, the bore all the way through, the clamping uh, section and the split. Seems to work well. The last cast iron piece of this tool, um, at least in its default form, is the table. So I've got this mounted to the faceplate, dialed it in as best I can. Now we're going to turn down this spigot to a close uh, three quarter inch. It needs to be pretty close because you don't want it to rock or be at an angle when you clamped it. Got to do that shoulder there as well. And yeah, should be 750 and there we go. Pretty happy with that. Put a nice little chamfer on the end. And now we need to drill through 3 8 And I think this is just to provide clearance because uh, there's nothing that goes down this deep, but I'll do it anyway. Just consecutively larger drills. And then a nice chamfer at the end. Now we're going to turn this outside face down to half an inch total thickness for the top surface. So it's quite a bit of this. So after I've finished facing the bottom surface, I'll turn the rim and switch the whole thing upside down to the other side of the rim and then face off across the top. That's made quite a racket here. As you can see, it looks starting to look quite nice though. Just putting a tiny little chamfer on the corner, and then the last action here is to drill and ream a counterbore for the hole through. And this is presumably for a bush to hold some other tooling. And again, a nice little chamfer there as well. There were a few projects which I didn't record the making of. This one is a locking ring. It's just a simple threaded screw there with a brass tip going into a, a ring with a nice bore through it. I didn't want to make a ball turning attachment just yet, so I bought in these handles and I just Loctited in some threaded rod to act as the uh, shaft of the handle. And this is them going into the casting now. And you see it's engaging with those little brass plugs I showed you right at the start. There we go, and that's it on that side. You see there's a slot there to hold that plug in place. And there you can see the clamping action on the shaft. I also made a square headed bolt for the base. Rather than a whole extra handle, this feels like something I'm going to rarely change. So just simply screws in here and holds the base to the shaft and vice versa. It was now time to start painting. So this is my first attempt at using two part filler, which went okay, I guess. This is the first coat of primer. After two coats of primer, two coats of undercoat, and then three coats of enamel, this is what the result looks like, and I'm quite happy with that. I bought myself a chopping board and mounted it using these brass screws, which I think look quite fetching, really. And now onto the final assembly. Here's the clamping bolt for the pillar that goes into the base and the pillar itself, which is a nice tight fit there. Just nipping it up now with my adjustable wrench. Here's the lower arm. The table is already in place there, but of course that table comes out, can be used separately. 
there's a small stop here. Just making a bit more space. And then the upper arm locked in place as well. And here is what it looks like. I certainly hope you've enjoyed watching me build the base for the Universal Pillar Tool. Now, if it wasn't very obvious by the shots that you saw towards the end of the video of it being uh, complete, um, it requires extra accessories, extra tooling, extra equipment that's mounted to it to perform a number of tasks. And that's what I'll be doing in my next video. I already have quite a lot already filmed and hope to get that out to you very soon. I'm really pleased with this tool. It's certainly the uh, item that I've taken the most care in finishing as opposed to the machining process itself. And I think it shows.